Yeah, it's interesting to hear, you know, from the other point of view, if these were potentially, um, you know, positive good beings, possibly even here to help or, or whatever, to think that they've been captured by the, uh, by the shadows. It's pretty sad. Uh, thanks for going over that. Um, great hater, go ahead. Howdy. Um, I just had to pop my hand up. I, I, I first started talking with animals or hearing animals when I was about three. I got bitten in the face by a Doberman. And um, my dad was going to go kill it because he's a redneck and that's what you do when a dog bites a child. But she was sorry. And she told me she was sorry. And I like petitioned my father for his, her life based on that she had said she was sorry and if you say you're sorry and admit that you made a mistake that you don't have to get as bad a punishment <laughs> as if you really, like, try to get away with something so um and i had the near death experience once upon a time and and whatnot and and uh uh did a stint as a massage therapist for a while and that's like you know being a really quiet room with like this really nice music and someone being very calm and you know you have a lot of entities walk through the wall um, <laughs> and, um, it's kind of hard to keep quiet about, about, you know, but, um, to, to, to Larry, um, I used to feel the same way as you about God. I mean, like, you know, you cast your eyes down and you, you know, you know, Monty Python's, you know, you, you revert your vision and, you know, lower your head and, and be in fear of this great and, you know, terrible, mean thing, you know, and, um. Dr. Naomi Wolf has been reading, um, she's really diving into religion for herself, and she started reading the Geneva Bible to people out loud, because she's a Jewish, she, she, she went to synagogue school, she reads Hebrew fluently, and, um, so, she also has a freaking master's degree in poetry, of all freaking things, so she can read, like, stuff from, with the the Dallas dining, you know, and all that, and translate it directly to English as she's speaking and so what has happened is as she's been reading she'll read like just a short you know part of a chapter in the Geneva Bible which was you know created when people were running for their lives from Bloody Mary torturing people to death and um then she reads from the Hebrew Bible and compares it, and then she has, like, a, um, a Catholic Bible, because she's not going to touch King James, I don't blame her, um, <laughs> but she has, like, a, a modern-day Bible that she reads from to compare, and God is, like, the most likable, like, cool, like, just wonderful thing, and, and, and that got taken away by people who wanted to have a middleman. They want to make sure that you know, anything you do is bad that they find out about it so they can, you know, extort you and that you pay money to, you know, try to buy your freaking uh, salvation and, you know, and, and I don't, I'm not bad-mouthing, I'm not bad-mouthing anybody who um, enjoys King James. I understand a lot. I, I really had to dig into this. I grew up Methodist too, so, like, anyway. Um, you know, but, but he did go before um, his... When he questioned about how he treated his chamber man, um, you know, he said, you know, Jesus had his James and I had my George. So there's that. And I'm going to like wrap this up in a sec. But I did want to share one last thing that's really, really important um, is um, that we are created in the image of God. And our creator is a creator, is, is like, um, invents and designs useful things and good things and, and, and beauty and, and things such as that. And so anytime you have something pop in your head that is negative, that's not you. That's not a creator. That's not something that's looking for solutions and for it to be better and bigger and stronger and kinder and more loving. It's just not. And there's a doctor named Dr. Jerry Marzinski and he has a, a YouTube, it's called Engineering Sanity, and he was a, a clinical uh, psychologist in the prison system for like 40 years, and so he dealt with people who were criminally insane, and a lot of them um, are classified as schizophrenic, and, you know, when he first went to school, he said, Okay, so schizophrenia, like these people that have a chemical imbalance, what's the chemical? Oh, we don't know. 
well, is it too much or is it too little? Well, we don't know. We just give them the drugs and it shuts it up and, you know, they're fine. And, and it's, that's really a shit fix, pardon my French, but, um, you know, as time has gone on, he, he was like, okay, so the schizophrenics suffer hallucinations. Okay. Hallucinations are all over the place. Like, I've, I've done Mother Vine, I've done, I've done ayahuasca with a, a shaman, um, I forget how many occasions, four or five, something like that, but, you know, <laughs> Hallucinations can go any, they don't have to be negative, they don't have to be positive, they can do any damn thing they want to, yet schizophrenics, they're all this negative, nobody likes you, you're weird, you, you, you know, um, <laughs> if you'll shoot yourself in the foot, I'll shut up and leave you alone, they shoot themselves in the foot, it's like, bah, ha, ha, you dumbass, you know, um, they have, the, the, Jerry Marzinski says that these are entities, and they're extra dimensional, you know, especially extraterrestrial. He's heard them um, in his office. Like it sounded like a um, arc welder climbing the wall and then going across the ceiling and then dropped into his trash can. I scared the bejesus out of him. Um, the patient who had come in and and was leaving and said, uh, "You know, they want to talk to you." <laughs> and he's like, well, "Okay, we'll come back in." And and the patient says, uh, "Channel." These entities, you have no right to do this. You're interfering with our way of life. And the patient then went, I didn't say that. That wasn't me. I, I didn't. Jerry's like, it's, it's cool. I, you know, it's, it's okay. We can talk. Just don't worry. And so after the buzzing, weird sound fell into his trash can, he could still hear it in there going, Nye. he, you know, ended the session and let the guy go and pretty much avoided him, in all honesty, for a couple months, and he saw him in the hall one day, and was like, hey man, how, you, you doing all right? And he's like, yeah, I've been, the things you've been teaching me, and, and to help me, they, they've been really working on, um, love it, right? And he goes, well, that was quite a, you know, that was really pretty some, something in my office the other day. Yeah, it sure was. And he goes, so what happened afterwards? You know, when you left, what, what did you do? He goes, oh, well, they told me to find a shiv and kill you. And the chair's like, oh, well, I'm real glad you didn't do that. And he goes, yeah, I couldn't find a shiv. <laughs> so, like, it, it, he's, he's convinced me, I mean, he's got 40 years of experience, and he's worked with these people, and I have friends that are schizophrenic, and that's not the shit that they pull, and the things they say that come out of their mouths, that's not really them. I mean, one, one guy I've known since he was a little, little, little boy, and it's dark entities and they're and they're they they, they call it lose and they freaking eat our our negative thoughts and every time they can suppress god in us they they that's that's yummy treats for them and so um i think that that kind of wraps up my little note session there and um that yeah so i'll end on that thanks y'all great hater thank you for for sharing um, and you, you know, your, your name, great hitter, it is, it is going to make a lot of people think that you're a troll when you're coming up to speak. I'm just letting you know that as, as a warning um, Good. In, in full Good. transparency. Good. <laughs> it's, 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 it's sarcasm. And it, it's like, I, I, I'm 60 years old, you know, like I just, no, that's, that, that's totally fair. It's just, it's, it's easy for people to, you know, play it safe and, and not even bring you up. But I understand like you, you want people who can tolerate some, some free thinking. Um, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, no, I totally I get it. Normal, you know what I mean? But I, I do appreciate that. You know, because I have gotten pretty picked up. Some people say I'm a bot. Like, uh, like honest to God, they think I'm a bot, which is really funny. But um, and, and so I'll speak question for them, and then I'm really a bot. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Well, well, thanks yeah, for coming I, up to speak, I, uh, great hitter, uh, Dexter. Thank you for. I, oh, I'm sorry. Am I speaking oh, over someone? No. Yeah, I just want. Hey, really quick in regards to what she stated about schizophrenics. I'm an occupational therapist working with uh, all kinds of diagnoses and cognitive disorders. And uh, I would get Googled a lot and my talk about the shadow people at and uh, being the ones that were terrorizing them. So I, I've long thought that perhaps a lot of these people are just seeing and hearing more than uh, most people can handle. So... That's it. Oh, one thing real quick I meant to, to, to do. Um, have y'all heard about the, the, the new, um, or they're calling it, a, the, a new, the new. 
Sorry, great hitter. I'm going to intercede there and go to Dexter. Hey, sorry. Uh, did she want to continue? I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Dexter. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, good, good evening or good night to wherever you are geographically. Um, I'm in Ontario, Toronto. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, send my greetings and I, French, thank you for giving me a opportunity to speak. I'm going to make it very, um, I'm going to make it very sh quick and short to the point on a few things. Cause I think I know where the subject is going. Um, you know, this is a way for me to express, I'd like to do this before I even go to a therapist cause then I'd be put on a form. But, um, so I just want to say this. So when we're talking about experiences and UFOs or UAPs or ADHD um, or ADD um, or schizophrenia, uh, quote unquote schizophrenia, um, I'm not dismissing anybody's emotional distress or unease or dis-ease thereof. Um, but I do want to say this. I've had my experiences even before um, the age of seven. Um... And I just want to start off by saying that when you know that there's something that does not feel right, um, you know. Uh, I was very young when I knew that something was just not right. I knew that there was more to our reality that meets our eyes. Um, our eyes and our senses and our instincts um, sometimes don't agree. Um, and so, but I always knew and I was beaten because of it, because they wanted to place me in a box of religion. So whenever I asked if Eve was Adam's sister, uh, scientifically speaking, oh, I got my ass well done. You wouldn't even imagine. Because then that put, yeah, I know, right? Um, uh, it got my ass well done. And I think that's a part of the post-traumatic stress disorder that I am um experiencing because then it turns your belief system on its head and um the way that i look at it uh i'm going to be very frank with you and uh, something that uh doomer zaddy was saying um they don't like free thinking um or that you should be free thinking but your free thinking only goes to a certain degree um, because if you free think too much and it starts to make people question their belief or their perspective, especially in religion, um, automatically you need to see a shrink. But I just want to say this, um, and that's that, uh, UAPs now, UAPs and UFOs. The thing with UAPs is, um, I'm going to say this, UAPs, they may tell you it's unidentified aerial phenomena, but I'm not buying it. I'm leaning more towards universal astral projections, is what UAP stands for, in my interpretation. And then you have UFOs, which is, um, and then you have UFOs, which is, um, um, wait, universal frequency observations. Yes, um, sorry, universal frequency observations, then you have UAPs, which are universal astral projections. Um, that's just the collective understanding of the nature of our reality. Um, but see, and even with, uh, yeah, that, that, that's just my interpretation though, and I think these beings are, are very high, uh, highly spiritual. I've always been encountering them. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Do I know? I don't know. You couldn't, you couldn't, you can give me, even if you were to give me, um, enough money to, uh, secure, um, even unknown generations after me from my blood, um, I would still look at you in your eyes, pupil to pupil, just to tell you that I just, cause I don't know. You know, like, I'm not going to give you some shitty answer um, just to make sure generations, because even if that's the case, religion is still not a secure answer. So what makes you think that you're going to give me any amount of financial gain to make sure even unknown origins of my generations that could possibly exist after when I'm long gone uh, physically? Um, I, there's no answer I can give you because I just don't know. But I will tell you this. Um, there's more to our reality than our eyes meet. 
Um, and I think that we need to start looking into the deeper past, uh, the deeper part of us that we call Satan. And I think that we need to start looking very closely at what we demonize and look at as Lucifer. Um, that's just my take. And I do want to land my plate with this. If you don't hear anything else I'm telling you, just this is all I want to say. Is that... Um, Religion, the way that we, the way that we see things, it's been, it, it, my observation, even since as a child, um, it, just to put it to you in any easy form, is that um, what you've been told, what we've been told as a savior, and who we've been told is the evil one, they flip the script. The, fl the script has been flipped to 100%. Um, uh, and even the Gnostic text has tried to warn mankind a very long time ago. I'm going to tell you this, and I just want to share this with you. Scientifically speaking, because I heard a little bit about religion within the conversation when I came in, and I'm just going to lie my pipe right here after this, because I know people want to speak. Um, when you look at religious texts, I know the Bible inside and out, and um, somebody was bringing up the King James Virgin, uh, Version, the KJV. That's the closest you'll ever get, and that's why they had to come up with other translations. That's the closest thing you'll ever get to the Sumerian text. It is the closest thing. That's why they had to uh, bring you, publish you, different translations. It's the closest thing. Now, um, I'm going to say this. Scientifically speaking, religious people love science until it proves their perspective in religion and the identity that they built in it um, contradictory. Scientifically speaking, if you look at the story in Genesis, chapter 1, in between, let's say, 25 and 29, or 20, uh, 28 to 29, Eve, Eve is Adam's either or, sister, or his daughter. That was the first sin. Jesus was never crucified for the sins of man. He was crucified for the sins of his father, not for us. Those deities, they wanted nothing to do with us. They're not immortal. They couldn't even sustain their own bodies here on earth. They were, they were, de they were depleting. They were deteriorating. Uh, they couldn't sustain the earth's atmosphere. Is why they had to, and that's where the problem came in, with trying to hurry up and create another uh, form, uh, lesser than them, to do their bidding, which is concurrently us. And when I say concurrently, because when we look at generations, generations are concurrent. Now, but the thing is, uh, Jesus was never crucified for the sins of mankind. He was crucified for the sins of his father. I'm not here to change anyone's mind or beliefs. Believe whatever you want. Life is too short not to believe what you want. But there's a different perspective, and I think that we're all adult enough to um, acknowledge each other's perspective. But in my interpretation, my observation, is that when I read every biblical scripture... And that's the first sin. That was the first sin. And Lucifer was an adversary against what was happening because it went against and breaking the laws and order of reproduction when it started to interfere with blood kin interacting with each other in a sense of intimacy to reproduce. That was the adversary, Satan. If you were to ask any religious person, they would tell you that Satan and Lucifer, they would probably look at them as brothers. No. No. Satan is a title. It is not a person. It is a title. The adversary and the angelic host, which were other gods. There were more than one god. The, the Elohim, the star people. It's, that's all that is. And then extraterrestrial, extra um, extra terrestrial, if I'm saying it correct, because uh, my tongue is tied. It's outside of us, not upwards or downwards, but outside. That's extra terrestrial space. It's not up or down, it's around us. 
that's the angelic that is the heavenly host outside of us around us uh, that's where the gods come in you know and i, I just want to say like everything that we've been told is a complete and utter lie you see and I'm going to say this, and one more thing about free will and sin and repentance. It's an oxymoron. How can you have sin? And how can you have God's plan? Sin exists. Okay, sin exists. It exists. But then how can you sin and then repent and your sins be forgiven? Like it never even existed. And then you can go into the kingdom of God. Sin can't exist then. How can you have sin and repentance in the same sentence? It makes no sense. And free will? How can you have free will if your supreme God, your Abrahamic God, your Abrahamic God, you know, he, he's said to be the Alpha and the Omega, omnipotent, omnipresent. He knows the beginning and the end. That's the Alpha and the Omega. The yoke within your yoke. I know I know the biblical scriptures. And but see, and when you know it and you pick it apart, you get beaten for it. But then you have a community surrounding you because you're in an agreement with the delusion. You see. That that's true. Yeah, sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. That was uh I think the reason I was letting that go on so long is because I was resonating with it because let me let me just drop a little truth bomb on the whole group here a and I'm I'm declaring a truth okay don't don't do too hard don't do too hard <laughs> drop it <laughs> drop the truth bomb the story of Adam and Eve is is a psyop and I'm gonna I'm gonna prove that mm. to you right now and this before we show's be, going off the rails. <laughs> before be, be, before we get into um, the, the details of this, understand that it's very likely the story was given to us by Yahweh. Okay, so let's go back to the creation story from the Sumerians. They create they they mix their genes with ours. They give us bigger heads because bigger brains require bigger heads. They do not increase the size of the birth canal because that would interfere with walking upright. This causes extreme pain in childbirth. Humans have extraordinary pain in childbirth compared to native animals on this planet. And to deny that is to deny the obvious. Now, Go to the story of Adam and Eve. Nothing about genetic engineering there. Nothing about, it's just God creating mankind in his image, right? And Adam and Eve do something wrong. And for their punishment, for Eve's punishment, pain in childbirth. Is that clicking? No, they didn't do anything wrong. Okay, Larry, wait, can I just say wait, something? De de no, Dexter, I've got to land this. This is this is my gemstone. Okay, so what we see here is the pain in childbirth. Mr. Thing, I'm going to drop you. Okay, the pain in childbirth came from the genetic engineering. They decided that the Anunnaki, decided it was good enough. But Yahweh comes along and wants to make us feel guilty about something. First of all, he knows, I mean, everybody knows that we didn't do anything wrong in, in, the, in the garden. Um, he lied to us when he said that we would die if we ate it. We didn't die. We lived about 930 years. Um, so that was one lie. The second lie... Hey, hey Larry. Yes, Larry, before we go down that rabbit hole, uh, we've got to let Heidi go. Oh. So I just want to thank Heidi uh, for being here tonight and for everyone who came up and shared a story. Um, uh, Heidi, I hope we have you back again soon. Um, please let us know when you're able to um, share that new news that you have. Um, we'd love to have you back anytime that you decide that you're good to share the news. And thank you again so much for being here. 
I think your message is so important, and uh, we'll be carrying it on. Thank you. Heidi. After you leave. Thank you so much, Heidi. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank everybody for uh, <clears throat> allowing this this space to happen, and uh, great questions and great conversation. And uh, Heidi, it was an yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, thank you. It'd be awesome to pop back and uh, talk even um, even before if I if I have to stall a little bit more and i i didn't mean to like dangle a carrot uh, it's it's been a really complicated time and i think i'll understand when i am able to discuss it further but uh, thank you when thanks you, when you want to share it and, and we'll be here to hear yeah it. for sure for sure you guys all take care of yourselves and uh keep sharing the message to you know help each other out and figuring this world out thank you so much heidi good night good night And Heidi, I hope you keep listening because, oh, no, I think she's dropping. Yeah, okay. I was wanting her feedback on this, but I will continue. It's not much longer. Um, so what we see in this story is that we are that we are being punished for doing something wrong. And what, in fact, it was the genetic engineering that was the actual source of the pain. So this is a indeed a psyop it's a lie that's being told by our superiors or that superior to us and it's been living with us for over 2,000 years and we really have to ask what's going on here why why would you know you look at the bible is supposed to be the source of truth and what you see here is that the Bible is lying to you about your very origin and about the reason you have pain in childbirth. It's a lie. Who gave us that lie? That was supposed to be coming from God. So we really have to question that and say, okay, what is your conclusion, Larry? Well, my conclusion is that someone thought that it would be good to make us feel guilty for having done something wrong. So that we'll always be afraid of God. Like, you know, that we'll be compliant. We'll be, we'll be, uh, have that fear of God. Maybe that was good for us, they thought. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're supposed to think that was good for us. I'm not so sure. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's the way of a loving God. So I'm, I'm wondering why, why this psyop? Larry, can I say something? I yes, came to I'm another. No, hold on. Let me just say something else to you. Uh, me, I think. I think outside of the box. Let me just make it very clear because I see hands going up. I'm going to make it very clear to you on where I stand with this. Do I believe that the Bible or anything that they took from predated text, uh, the Sumerian text, um, and they tried to uh, put it in a book called the Bible? Do I believe it exists? One hundred percent. They have no other choice. They have to. That is our. That is our. Um, you can call it a manual, uh, a diluted manual, but a manual nonetheless. I believe. I believe. I. My observation from a child till now, one hundred percent. Do I be, Do I buy it? No. Do I think that they flipped the text? Yes, I do. But and I will say this to land my plight. It is my, just mine alone. You don't have to believe me. It's just my interpretation, which is fine. Like, don't get your panties in a bunch. But from what I've experienced in surgery and being put underneath anesthesia and leaving my body, I'm going to make it very clear. If you don't hear it, if you don't hear me or you don't take anything that I have to say, take this at least or consider it. When they talk about heaven and the light at the end of the tunnel, it is to entrap us here in the physical world. That's the first thing. The second. Okay. No, wait. So, so Hold on. Trap. I'm not done so yet. Trap. I'm not done yet. Hold on. But when you're looking at what they demonize and vilify as hell, what I'm getting at is that your freedom, the freedom of breaking the trap 
is behind you. You're supposed to look and turn around behind you. But when you leave your physical body, you don't have the full body. You only have from your head up. And everything around you is your body. You're supposed to look behind you. They vilified. This is, see, and this is my thing. They vilified hell for a reason. It's because uh, they know the actual root of freedom. And this is why they can carry on and get away with what they do here in the physical world. They can get away with it because they're going to entrap us again with the promise of heaven. They want you to meet your loved ones again. They want you to meet your memory because this physical world is nothing but a memory. So when you meet your loved ones, when you leave your physical body, you need to detach. They're no longer here. You need to detach from all of that. Detach from it. That's a memory. I'm not saying that they didn't love you. I'm not saying that um, it, what you experienced wasn't real. But you need to detach from all of it. Your welcome is where it ends. You're welcome. When I tell you that you're welcome here, that's where it ends. I'm not asking you to come back here. Your welcome is where it ends. Your freedom is not here. It's behind you. This is why our our politicians they can they can kill, they can murder, they can annihilate, they can decimate, decimate, they can colonize because they know where their freedom is. They've been telling us that heaven heaven is a place on earth have you not heard it it's in your lyrics it's in our lyrics heaven is a place on earth they want us trapped here again but the minute we break that we enter the new earth let me tell you something and i don't mean no offense but let me make it very clear to you and it's gonna be a harsh reality but let me make it very clear to you with all the colonization the blacks colonized blacks the Arabs colonized Arabs. The Chinese did the same to their own. But for some reason, it's very, it's been made very clear for some reason or the next that it was the white man that did it, that colonized the whole world. I find that very interesting. I, I, let me tell you something. I, Thank no, you, wait, Dexter. Hold on. Her, I didn't say it Dexter. was right. Dexter, we've gone way off topic here. Um, let's try to get to some hands. I think uh, Martz is next. Thanks. I didn't say it was right. Um, I'm going to unmute, and Martz, you're going to be next. It'll be a little bit of a delay for you, Martz. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Welcome to the space. I'm not sure if we've lost Martz. Uh, Martz, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, go right ahead. Um, I wonder what this uh, topic today is. You're talking about ETs or religion or like the way it talks. Well, you might have, I'm not sure if you were here. We ha actually had Heidi Hollis as a guest, and the no. topic was Shadow People, Hat Man, and Aliens. Yeah, never mind, Fred. She's gone. Um, let's go to cloud, bring us some light through the cloud. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead. All right. Well, I'd spent a while since I participated in these spaces. I just went back to third shift not long ago, but... You guys were talking about the Sumerian texts and things like that, and I've done a lot of reading on those things. And I was just kind of curious if I could get some feedback, because I remember it was probably about 2012 I was doing some reading, and I, in my head I came to the conclusion that Anki and Enlil, they were brothers, you know, Enlil had dominion over the, the sky and all that, and then Anki had dominion over the earth and the, the ground. And, you know, Anki was the geneticist of the Anunnaki who fashioned us, you know, weaving the baskets and all that, you know, this one had this malady, this one had that malady until he perfected it by what, like, 
basically giving birth through his wife, Nimue, I think her name was. But I came to the conclusion that Anki was, he loved his creation, which was us. And Enlil saw us more as basically machinery, something to mine the gold and do their will and basically be their slaves. And Anki wanted us to, to have more, to be able to procreate and to be able to, you know, learn and become as they were and, you know, basically be his children. And then it clicked, like, I did some more reading and it kind of went into this realm of Anki kind of represented Satan to where Enlil was kind of representing Yahweh. And it kind of falls into where he was talking, the other guy was talking about where the, the script was flipped. Now, don't get me wrong here. Like, I'm doing my best to kind of go through the Bible and I'm trying to follow God's word and things like that. But way back then, you know, I had this revelating thought. It was just this feeling. I felt like it was true. And with Anki being Satan and the one who loved humanity and loved us to where in Lil, you know, when he came down and he saw that that little girl was, you know, walking and talking and, you know, was intelligent and showing him around to get him to where he needed to go to speak to his brother. And he was enraged by this because she was, she knew how to read and write and do all these other things. And I was just kind of curious if I could get some feedback on if you guys have read anything on this or if, you know, I'm just kind of curious on other people's thoughts on that line. Um, yeah, I'll lay my plane there and just kind of curious if you guys have anything to say on that subject. Fringe, we can't avoid this. People, people want to know about this. This is, um, you know, I, I don't have the, the traditional Gnostic or Satanic inversion view on this, but I think people need to hear your perspective and my perspective on this because it's coming up and it, it ties into AI and a bunch of, you know, this is maybe one of the most dangerous topic areas. I thought you fell asleep, Ulrich. I just wrote to Larry and I said, we're going to close the space. I think Ulrich fell asleep. I, I, I was dozing off, but, um, but I, I was reawakened. Yeah. Yeah. So I think most people in the, in the space, well, there might be some new people in the space. I would, I, even after, um, let's see, I'll try to make this very quick. I was a Christian for most of my life. And then I uh, ended up realizing all the shadow people experiences and the alien experiences and everything was um, very much related. And I actually went through a very dark uh, period of being black-pilled. Um, I looked at all of these theories that, you, that, that are coming up right now, everything that Dexter said, a lot of what Larry talks about. Um, I completely disconnected from Christianity. Um, I ended up in a literal, and I'm not going to go into details here. It, it's getting late. I ended up in a literal battle for my very soul uh, with the, what we refer to as aliens, uh, demons, these shadow people. Um, it, it, it was a very, very difficult time in my life. I was in an um, extreme crisis. I had completely turned my back on religion, questioned uh, Christianity, every single thing about it. Larry, I entertained all of your questions about Yahweh. I did the whole thing. Um, and then uh, about a year ago, I ended up realizing that, and this is, I'm coming up on almost I got to be coming up close on 300 experiences in the last two and a half years. And I'd venture to say uh, that's not a brag, um, but it's more than anyone else in the room, I would venture to say. And I say that only because I'm, I want everyone to understand I'm speaking from experience. And so after being uh, enmeshed with these beings for a very long time being in their environment this is a telepathic environment I'm absorbing information from them that they're trying to hide from me I'm going through testing I'm going through a any experience you've ever heard an experiencer discuss I I I've probably been there 
every time an experiencer opens their mouth, I, I could just say, oh yeah, me too. But then the whole room would get bored and it would sound really dumb. So I don't do that. But I'm just trying to help the room to understand um, that I have extensive experience with a bunch of different types of these beings. And I ended up just realizing that they were all a bunch of lies and that their entire purpose to get back to the to the purpose of, of this Heidi Holly space tonight is to lie and to lead us away from the light. And it's with any lie that they can come up with. Any lie and every lie you can think of is what they come up with. And I, uh, making it a short story, ended up coming right back to Christianity because that is what I believe has got the most truth in it. Um, I think there is truth in a lot of the religions. If you really start looking at the religions, they're almost telling the same story. Um, but I am a Christian. I just went to Deliverance a couple of weeks ago. That's how strongly I believe in it and how strongly I believe that that is the answer. Um, deliverance is like Christian exorcism, just to give you an idea of how seriously I'm taking this and how seriously um, this discussion is with Heidi tonight. So I will leave my part there. Um, you guys are all free to go ahead and discuss all of your other theories. Um, I don't agree with any of them, but you're absolutely free to have the discussion. Ulrich, if you want to lead it, um, uh, and we maybe go to Christopher, and then Ulrich, you can be free to lead the discussion and stay open as long as you like. Hey, Fringe, uh, the, yeah. One, yeah, that ahead, was uh, one mysterious, the way you ended that was a bit mysterious, that so you don't agree with any. So are you saying that, like, this thing that I sketched out about the Sumerians and the pain and childbirth, that doesn't resonate with you as a... Yeah, yeah and... I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on that, Larry, but I, let just be assured that you're, we're, I'm echoing, if you want to close your mic. Oh, sorry. Um, just be assured that um, I did not come into this thing, in, into what happened to me over the last two and a half years. Uh, so I first had aliens in my bedroom at three and a half, and then I had shadow people my whole life. I didn't realize the shadow people and the aliens were related, blah, blah, blah. I get to about October of 2022, I completely disconnected from Christianity. So any idea that I'm just religious and so this is where I ended up is completely untrue. Um, I completely disconnected from it. I questioned whether it was an, a lie. I thought maybe I had been lied to my whole life. I had to stop and say, do I believe this because it's true or do I believe this because this is what I've been told my whole life? You know, did I get brainwashed? Was Yahweh, you know, just a baby god who, you know, treated everybody terribly? So I entertained all of that. So without getting into, um, without getting into it extensively, just be assured that I entertained all of it. Everything you guys are talking about or trying to bring up right now. Um, and it took several months, and, and I'd say actually it took almost an entire year for me to realize that these things... They're just liars. The negative side, they just lie. They come up with lies and propaganda, and they have 10 or 12 stories that they tell everybody, and it's all propaganda. And you can take that or leave it. You can believe me or not believe me. I'm not here to convince you uh, of how I look at things. I'm just here to tell you that after a lot of experience, probably more than anyone else you will ever meet, I ended up right back where I started at Christianity. Now, I have, probably have a, a greater view uh, than most other people. There are Christians who would call me a heretic because of some of my views. But in general, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm staying. And um, I, I really, I don't want to sound closed-minded at this point, but I went through so much hell getting back to where I am. I'm not going to just keep entertaining their lies because once you find out that that an entity is lying to you, it would actually be almost a cycle of abuse if I stayed there and just kept entertaining the lies day after day after day. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so 
we can go to Christopher and then Ulrich, feel free to go ahead and lead and I'll just leave the space open now that um, Heidi is gone because it could end up being a great, uh, you know, great productive uh, conversation. So Christopher, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I'm, this was a wonderful space and I want to give major props to the moderators for leading a safe space and um, Larry also for laying the smack down when people got off track, cut them off. <laughs> uh, Dude, Larry was hardcore. I was like, what's up, Larry? He kicked a couple people out of the space. Uh, I don't know what's happening, but Larry, okay. We need Larry as a Doom moderator all the time. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, he'll just be booting people out of the Doom room. <laughs> then we won't have anybody listening. But, no, I think... I think uh, keeping people on track, there's there's a great balance in the Doom Room between uh, letting people speak and listening. This is such a respectful space. Major props to you guys. This is this is the best space on Twitter. Um, Thank you for so. Them. We we try yeah, really hard, I, and we we try to get better every time. You know. Well, I really appreciate the civil uh, engagement of many different viewpoints. Um, this is a model of uh, interdisciplinary, multi-viewpoint you know, viewpoint dialogue, um, and, and I just think this is wonderful. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. This is such a great space. I love more Doom Rooms, please. Um, and you just, and you just made my night, Christopher. Thank you so much for those kind words. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Larry. I, it's it's awesome to see you as a co-host. <laughs> uh, you, you've done well as a co-host tonight. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see. Um, so I'm an Orthodox Christian with a Master of Divinity. I'm a seminary-trained person. I, I have a Master of Divinity from St. <laughs> Vladimir's. Orthodox Theological Seminary, and to me it's fascinating how these UFO spaces, they end up in theology, you know, I think that's wonderful, I think it's great that these spaces were exploring the, the depth and the nature of reality, it's like, you know, we all gather here, we're, we're uh, coming from our different uh, viewpoints and experiences, and uh, trying to make sense of this great mystery, uh, and, and it, it's these spaces where we're asking the biggest possible questions. And I just want to give major kudos for creating a safe space for people with different viewpoints, um, to really ask the hardest possible stuff, which, you know, gets people's hackles up. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, here we are, uh, somehow we end up from Hatman asking questions about Sumerian religion and Yahweh and <laughs> uh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, so let's see where, where was I going with all this? Uh, Let me ask you a question, Christopher, because uh, man, you're, you know, you're well versed and you've been in this, this, ancient text field, Hebrew text, uh, Christian, you know, the Bible. Um, so glad to have you as a friend. I, I've been following you already, but um, are, would it be safe to, to say that you're in sort of transition as well as the rest of us? Are your thoughts evolving? Don't let them pull you into the light, Christopher. This is how you end up on a unicorn with rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope it's a robot unicorn attack. Uh, yeah, uh, Larry, that's a great question, and I'm absolutely in transition. Um, but uh, how do I describe that? Um, so, oh, that's such a great question. Um, I, I'm an Eastern Orthodox Christian. And uh, I have seminary training, and I'm very, very, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a serious follower of Jesus in the way. Um, and 
I, I think there's a lot of um, fruitful perspectives that that I could add to the conversation um, that have been neglected or passed over or forgotten in kind of uh, Western polemics. Um, the Eastern Church has a whole different trajectory and has lots of surprising sorts of uh, insights. Um, it's coming from a pre-Enlightenment, pre-modern viewpoint. Uh, it, it, there's just a lot to learn from Eastern Christianity that's very surprising. So, uh, you know, uh, for starters, I think Christianity is bigger than what what your typical American um, assumes it to be. And the older um, Eastern, more mystical version is probably more satisfying. And um, there's just a lot of unexplored territory where you don't have to be bound into this black and white. Uh, there's just other categories available that have not been on the table for most of us. Um, so starting with that, but also, uh, just to be totally honest, Larry, I'm definitely on a journey <laughs> of my own paradigms being shattered. Um, Welcome you know, to the club. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's <laughs> in the last year, it's been, it's been a, a succession of, of shatterings. Uh, so, um, you know, Christopher, um, is it, I just picked up a Holy Bible from the ancient Eastern text. Is that, um, what you would be studying? I, I, I'm not sure what you're looking at there. Uh, to, to address this, this question of, of Bible translations and versions, um, you know, translations into English, there's lots and lots of them. Um, as far as ancient scriptures, we're all dealing with the same thing. I mean, uh, the King James controversy and all that sort of thing is, is a sort of a misnomer. It's like, uh, if you can read Greek, <laughs> you've got one source, you know, um, uh, as far as New Testament goes. Um, Old Testament, a little more complicated, uh, but um, the, the, I can't I can't name one English version that is the uh, golden standard. You know, um, I, I I I think the ESV is pretty good. Uh, I recommend. Uh, for people that are curious about how to understand scripture historically, to look into Dr. Michael Heiser, um, particularly if you're curious about the Old Testament. The Old Testament is kind of inscrutable to most of us because it was written in a different culture, a different time, and they didn't explain their assumptions. And so we come to this the scriptures with... Oh. Uh, Enlightenment, uh, Enlightenment American, American assumptions, assumptions. <laughs> and a lot of times, we, times we, we miss we what miss what they were what they were actually, actually trying, to convey. trying to convey. That is so true. Uh, by the way, I hope I'm not hot micing you. I do have headphones on. You might be picking that up one, but I just wanted to say uh, uh, they don't explain their assumptions. I ran into that so many times, and uh, it was remarkable. How, how little that's talked about. But it's frustrating. You know, <laughs> it is very frustrating for a modern reader. And and that's something that, unfortunately, the, the contemporary church um, doesn't really prepare people for. And I think this is why a lot of people get turned off to Christianity, because there's this assumption that you can just flip open this book that's a compilation of you know, 2,000 years of different authors with <laughs> from ancient cultures who share radically different viewpoints uh, and had knowledge of things that we're completely unaware of. And we think you can just flip it open, start reading, and understand everything. Um, and 
the mentality of an ancient reader is a lot different from a modern reader. This is something I learned in seminary. Just for instance, uh, around the time of Christ uh, in, and prior to him, among the Hellenistic Jews, uh, Philo of Alexandria, and um, and even among the pagan uh, philosophers like the Stoics, uh, it was a basic assumption that if if you were dealing with an inspired text, then that meant that there would be a surface layer that was obvious, and there would be a deeper hidden layer that was sort of the mystical spiritual layer, which you could only accept would be accessible um, if you sort of purified yourself and were reading with a spiritual understanding. Um, and that's just a totally alien concept, you know, uh, to us now. Um, we have kind of rational scientism and fundamentalists. And fundamentalism is the idea that you can read the scriptures uh, from, a, from a post-enlightenment viewpoint and that it literally means, you know, historically what it says. I mean, the, the, the Genesis account uh, among the church fathers was not necessarily understood to be strictly historical. I mean, Adam... And Eve, you've got the, the Genesis story. You have a story about a guy named Adam. Adam means man. Eve means life. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a mythological layer going on there. Uh, so, um, th there's just... Uh, there's a lot more depth and complexity even to how we should approach sacred texts and how historical Christianity approached its own sacred texts. Uh, the fundamental approach was that uh, Jesus taught that the, the scriptures spoke of him. And to read them correctly, you needed to uh, understand from the viewpoint of the cross and the the uh, resurrection, um, how everything reflected back. So, uh, you know, the, I'm I'm sucking up all the air here, uh, uh, but I just want to say historical Christianity does have other options that have not really been explored, and Eastern Christianity is one of those areas where uh, some of the black and white um, kind of stuck points. Um, there, there may be other avenues, but just to go back to your question, Larry, <laughs> that you actually asked me about um, kind of breakdowns and whatnot. All that said, my mind has been blown by, in the last couple of years, getting interested in paranormal topics, uh, Within the last year, I had a complete epistemological breakdown uh, when I discovered the Mandela effect, which suggests that reality is actually shifting and not stable. Uh, this, I feel like the Doom Room needs to explore the Mandela effect. The, <laughs> the, the, the Earth, our whole world, there's lots of evidence that it's, that it's morphing uh, that people have memories of things that no longer exist. Uh, you know, I have a really, really strong memory of side view mirrors saying objects in mirror may be closer than they appear. And uh, if you look now, they'll say objects in mirror are closer than they appear. And... Uh, that's been the law since ever it was enforced, and so objects in mirror may be closer than they appear, never existed in this timeline. Never, ever was printed on a mirror. Uh, but I spent hours driving to my grandpa's house, staring at that thing as a little kid, thinking, why are they not sure? 
and you could find uh, tons of evidence for that maybe reading. So, uh, Mandela effect is the unexplored. wild card of every anomalous phenomenon it's it's the (laughs) nothing is stable you don't know anything where is this where are we who are we and and that just upends anything i think i know uh so that's the one that's my hot item that's the thing is that we are apparently and and this excites me that we're in some kind of a transition where it's an unveiling, really. Uh, truth is coming to light, and that's all I'm trying to say with my diatribes about, you know, Yahweh and the Bible and the PSYOP and etc. is that we just, we're beginning to see this with, I used to use the phrase with 21st century eyes because I could know, I couldn't really explain it any other way than we, we must be becoming more mature to a degree that we can see these truths now, but I realize now it's more than that. There is an awakening happening, and I'm seeing it in these people, in these spaces, and everybody's talking about it. It's paradigm shifting. It is, but we we don't know exactly where it's going, but I think it's fun, you know, especially for me. I'm retired, um, but I wish that, I wish everyone could be retired and, and just enjoy the ride, but we have lots of hands up. Um, so this is so, the place to be, Larry. So, I just want to say, absolutely, this is the place to be while exploring that. And I think you and I have a lot to talk about. I hope, I hope we continue the conversation. So this, this, is the, this is the place to be, and to be honest, it's also an uncomfortable place, okay? And I'm just going to break the fucking fourth wall here. Um, the, you know, the uncomfortable place is, oh my God, do you talk about Yahweh? Uh, do you talk about Jesus? Do you talk about Satan? or not do you talk about one view of christianity the gnostic one that actually says yahweh is satan he demands blood sacrifices and jesus was the snake do you talk about another one where you say no you know all of these are stories and the whole thing was lies do you dare to go where fringe has gone somebody who has had 300 experiences and is telling you these beings lie and where, where I'm coming from, honestly, is when you look at the Sumerian texts in 20, 30,000, 20 to 30,000 tablets, these tablets talk about how they're going to lie to you about the Abrahamic texts. They talk about how they're going to split the tongue into many languages and distort the record of history. Um, so I start with the lie. And that's for me. Um, and I think the lie is in many ways much more valuable than an ostensible truth because a lie can be proven you can prove when somebody tells you a lie and it's much harder to prove the truth and whatever perspective you're coming from the only common ground we're really going to find is one of betrayal one of we've been lied to in massive massively different ways whether it's the virtualization of the of the, of the near-death experience and going through the tunnel and finding the actual white light might be a virtualization, whether it's a virtualization of beings pretending to be other alien races. We've heard accounts of beings that pretend to be Nordics that aren't Nordics. There's multiple levels of lies. Even, even We don't even know what is the force that is mainly responsible for preventing disclosure. We don't even know if that's human. And so we're no matter what what we believe we're all in for ontological shock we're going to experience another death of some sort of a god as in our religious conceptions are going to die and have to be reborn we're going to experience some sort of death and of a scientific conception our very fundamental understanding of science is going to die and be reborn um and then who the hell knows else right like even our own free will our own agency we might find out most of our thoughts weren't our own, and we'll have to have a whole new conception of justice, a whole new conception of like, what does sin even mean? Is there any originality? Did Einstein have a single original idea? All of these things might be things we need to contend with. Um, and I think this this type of discussion, the, the very dangerous one um, about Enki and, um, Enki and Enlil, 
uh, broadly, I want to give you something to chew on, Cloud, and then we're actually going to end the space. And we can we can have a space on this topic along the lines. I mean, there's so many topics we need to have. Timelines, which ties into the Mandela effect. People want an AI space. And I'm sure one day we're going to have the major, you know, Enki, Enlo, Luciferian, Satanic one. This this is an important one to have, just so that everybody knows where we where we stand on it. Um, Cloud, my my perspective is that archetypally you can take a look at many things without having to come to certain conclusions. That there's an archetype that we see, Mister, and the resistor can either be benevolent. Or he can be benevolent and he can be correctly or falsely cast as something bad. So if, if you're if you know if you take a look at Prometheus, the Promethean idea is present already in Anki and Enlo. This idea that humanity deserves to have an essence and nature, it deserves to be able to protect itself. You can get that in the abduction stories of we were supposed to be stewards of the earth. We're supposed to be able to own and, and protect this earth and defend ourselves. And we're given fire, the fire of the forge, the, the techne, the ability to make music, language, and, and have, have instruments and, and weapons. This is all embodied in the actual fire. And unfortunately, it is also associated with satanic things, right? But notice intelligence is also associated whether it's Illuminati, Lukes, Lucas, all of these are associations of light. I'm not so certain uh, that that organically would have been the case. I don't think you can reasonably be the Lord of Darkness and the bringer of light at the same time. At the very least, etymologically, I do think that Jesus is the bringer of light. Um, I don't think you're the, the Lord of Darkness and the bringer of light. It just, just, just conceptually, it doesn't make sense to me. But if you look at our Western psychology, it's seeping into science as well. We, we tend to sort of look at anything that has power or advancement or empowerment. We're tending to give it a very negative association. Um, and, I, and I think we do need to at least be philosophically much more questioning of this idea. The more we're completely anti-knowledge, anti-discernment, I think we don't realize that we're also slipping into anti-humanity. Um, so I think we do need to have some sort of embrace of a healthy resistance. Um, that doesn't mean you need to be a troll or a terrorist or you need to be constantly breaking things. But there is the, telling the truth, right? Whistleblowing, right? Like Snowden is still a fugitive. It's not a, it's not a coincidence that we treat, we treat Snowden like a satanic resistor when all he did is really like revealing the truth. There's sort of something maybe Promethean, right, that, that Snowden did, and we're still very conflicted with, with that act as a, as a society. Um, and this is sort of... Oh, how, that's how, such a good point. I just right. have to interrupt. Right. It, it, because yeah. it, reveals, it reveals the extent to which we are compliant to an authority that doesn't deserve our respect. Yes, and, um, and is obedience your substitute for virtue, right? And I don't think blind obedience is the substitute for sacredness. And I don't think blind disruption or, or, or blind pursuit of unlimited power is a, is, is a substitute for it. I think we need to really understand these battles. And back then, it was really a battle between war and technology, a battle of, you know, And nowadays, we have a different kind of battle. At least it's conceived in a different way. Um, and, and I think, you know, this, we could talk for hours about this. I hope that gives you something to chew on. Um, but I, I do, we're, we, we can doom for another four to five hours. And if we had started hours earlier, we could do that. But I'm, I'm honestly not going to be able to last. Uh, so I, I'd really like to give it to, to Cloud and then let, let Fringe and Larry have the last word, if that's okay. Um, Cloud, do go ahead, my man. All right, and I do appreciate you touching on that. Um, honestly, like, I wasn't giving a definitive yes or no on that. I was just curious if what I was, you know, reading back then was actually, you know, kind of, if it resonated with anyone else. I was kind of searching, kind of trying to gauge and see if I was on the right track, on the wrong track. 
but I didn't put a whole lot of stock into it. Like I said, I, I made that revelation back in like 2012. Granted, you know, I'd been on three cups of coffee and up all night and reading and reading and reading. And I was just, it was something that kind of stuck with me. And it, I was just, man, can that, that, that doesn't feel right, but it, it sounds right. You know what I mean? Because of everything that you read about Anki and how he, he liked us and everything. But, um, I don't know. I appreciate you really touching on that. And me, myself, I am a Christian. I'm trying to actually read through the Bible right now for the first time, like a straight read through. Oh my God, it's so hard. I'm still in the Old Testament and it's, I, I guess I'm reading the King James Version. Uh, some people may like that, some people may not, but it's a place where I started. <laughs> Just a little tip on that. Uh, there is, um, if you look up words that you're curious, you can either use an interlinear Bible where they actually give, send you directly to the Hebrew word, um, or alternatively, you can look at the dictionary in the in the archaic version of certain words. Like, take a word like prevent. Um, it has an archaic definition. I think that one does. I know meek does. Um, and so that's a, a little tip on how to get the most out of it. But yeah, the KJV is, in my experience, the most accurate because it doesn't fuck with the... Um, words to try to suit a narrative that is defined by Christianity today. <clears throat> Larry, you're right about prevent, uh, which in archaic meaning went go before, not stop. Prevent, veni, Latin go, pre beforehand. Uh, it meant so go ahead of. Well, thank you for putting that in because it was used in the story of the tax collector coming to where Jesus and Paul were inside the house. Well, Paul was outside the house, Jesus was inside some house, and a tax collector came along and spoke to Peter, talking about tax, and Peter came in to talk about tax, and Jesus prevented him. And I, I was wondering, what exactly did they mean by prevented? I knew it meant interrupt, you know, but um, I just looked, I, I always get more out of looking to the and it was it was basically he preempted him in modern language because Peter was about to ask for an attack, and Jesus already knew what the discussion was about and went ahead and uh, there's so much to talk about. But, um, the, but, co but, the coin, like, the coin in the fish that uh, that that he ended up going to to find. Oh yeah, I, that was. Okay, I'm going to go into that some other time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, for, for Fringe, like, can we take the last two hands? Is that too much, Yamar? And, and yeah, I, I do. Well, I think Cannon snuck in prior to us deciding to close the space, so let's definitely get there. Um, for Cloud, just very quickly. Um, so to me, these all these religions are all the same story. Um, generally speaking. I mean, if you talk to Rebirth, um, who, you know, he studied a lot of religions. If you ever go to his spaces, um, he studied a lot of different religions. He studied the Sumerian texts and the Bible and all of that. And um, I did ask him one day, since he had more knowledge than I did at that time, I asked him, uh, is this all essentially the same story? And he said, yes, it's essentially all the same story. And so I don't worry about Enki or Enlil or any of that nonsense. Uh, all of these are just baby G gods. They're not for matters. And I'm just telling you my opinion, which I think is a qualified opinion. Uh, these things are not from outer space. Uh, they've been here for thousands of years. They were here before we were here. They probably watched uh, the creation of this planet. Um, and so what I do, Cloud, is I start with Christ. And I say, okay, this is the answer. And I could even get into some pretty crazy ideas that Christians would probably think I'm um, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over, um, maybe even think I'm going to hell over it, like, and maybe we'll do that in the next space. Yeah, please. Um, hey, yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely an interesting viewpoint, but so what I do, Cloud, is I start with Christ, and I say, who was Christ praying to? He prayed to uh, Abba Father, and so I pray to Christ's Abba Father. I even say Yeshua HaMashiach's Abba Father. Um, 
to make sure I have the correct uh, big G God, and that's just, uh, you know, a little extra step I do, without worrying about who was Anki or Enlo or all this nonsense, I, I think it's all uh, there to just um, create confusion and division. That's what I think it's there for. Um, so hopefully that's a little uh, extra answer to your original question. Now let's get to canon, and then I think we really do um, all work have to consider okay. that being the last hand. Cloud, go ahead. I say, can I make one more comment real quick? I say, well, what got me into it is when I started this journey, I was like, okay, well, what's the oldest text that I can go back to try to find the origin stories? And the Sumerians is where I started. And I kind of started building from there. And so I was, I just thought I would throw that out there. <laughs> Yeah, and I and I did the same thing, and then, believe it or not, I came across some other sources who don't think the Sumerian texts are any older, and that it's actually all the same story, or that the biblical texts might even be older than they really are, and, you know, instead of just getting going down a rabbit hole, because I, I went into a crisis and went down a rabbit hole uh, on all of this stuff, um, and that doesn't mean I'm the expert on any of it, it's just that I went through my own crisis, and, and so I just, you know, started with Christ and worked backwards because I figured I can't go wrong there. So it's just a strategy. Uh, Cannon, go ahead. Well, how's it going? Thanks for letting me speak. Uh, I hope, hopefully, uh, the audio is all right. I'm in my truck and it's really loud. Uh, just real quick, I am one, I'm new to the UFO community. Uh, I do see everything from a spiritual perspective. I'm definitely a Christian. I will say I'm a great Christian. I'm definitely not a theologian, but I do feel like I know God and I know Jesus. is definitely something um, that I would die for. Um, I don't announce that to everybody because I don't want to offend anybody, and I don't want my beliefs and my opinions to be interpreted as arrogant, so I don't usually speak in a lot of spaces. Um, I, I go to Christian space a lot. Um, that's a pretty cool space where people are, for the most part, non-judgmental. Um, I've never said what I'm about to say because I don't want to, I've never wanted to offend anybody. I don't mean any offense by this now either, but I do, I feel like I've had victory over these things. I've never, um, seen any beings or anything, but I used to get sleep paralysis a lot when I was a kid, and it would be so bad to where I couldn't even speak with my mouth, and, um, but when I would, you know, call on the name of Jesus and claim it through his blood, it would go away instantly. <clears throat> um, the only time I've ever seen anything was like a shadow figure that could have been a shadow, um, that was the last time I had sleep paralysis in 2015. It could have been a fan shadow from the TV being on or whatever. Uh, but I did have sleep paralysis there. The same thing worked. And uh, when I had a dream, I saw my guardian angel in a dream. And he just basically, and it's the only dream I remember. And he basically cut this being in half. And he was definitely an angel because he was like eight foot tall. It's a, it's a crazy story. I don't want to take up too much time. Um, so I do think that there's power in that. So I, I'm kind of like, I don't know where I fit in with this whole thing, but I know that I've met a lot of great people in this community. And, you know, I just love to listen to it. But um, that, that was all I wanted to add. I appreciate you uh, guys letting me speak. And this is a great space today, tonight, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you for saying that, uh, Canon. Um, we are going to close the space. We, we purposely have a diversity of opinion up here. I'm spiritual. I'm not religious. Um, and I, and you know, uh, Larry, you're, he, you follow Jesus, but you're not a Christian. <laughs> and uh, Fringe is a Christian. Um, Fringe, this is your space you're hosting. I'm going to let you have the last word. Um, but, but these spaces mean a lot to me, and it's wonderful to see them grow. Yeah, thank you all so much. Um, Heidi was just fantastic, and thank you all so much. Thank you, Larry, Ulrich, Tiff, everybody who came up and told the story tonight. Um, and I think, uh, 
you know, we could just have a, a space on these topics and uh, just label it such and people can come and go as they please and get all this aired out and Ulrich, you can give your whole thing and Larry, you can give your whole thing and I'll give my whole thing and give everybody a chance to talk. I think it would be a great idea. But in the meanwhile, um, good night to everyone. And Ulrich, don't, what, what's our next space right now? Is it oh, uh, next Thursday with Montauk? Uh, it's a doom, it's a doom, full doom. It's full pole shift, apophis, aliens, doom. Yeah, there's so much doom coming up. The next, the next doom space is, right, Montauk? Um, no, no, we might, we'll make it be a surprise. We might have something sooner coming up, um, than the, because that's on the 16th, right, Fringe? Yeah, I think Montauk is the 16th. That's a pole shift space. Yeah, so follow Fringe, follow me, follow Tiff, and you might see a doom coming up, uh, as early as, as next Friday. But it Oh, yeah, wait, I'm totally off by a week, yeah. aren't I? Yeah, yeah so Montauk is two weeks from now. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. I'm totally off uh, by a week. It may be featuring somebody who might have something to do with disclosure, um, you know, a, a, a name that might rhyme with Eve, <laughs> and possibly. <laughs> and uh, later we might have one that also rhymes with Patanjali. <laughs> so it's possible. Dude, we already put Anjali's face out. <laughs> well, not everybody knows that. There was some suspense there for a second, but uh, but yeah, we're dude. That stuff between Anjali and Steve is crazy. It is. It is. Uh, you gave it away. I didn't say Steve. I said it rhymes with Eve. So no, I'm saying Anjali and Steve separately, and you called somebody else Eve because I have no I idea, have no what, idea you're what you're about. talking about either. I agree with you. Yeah, you're you're right. That stuff is crazy, um, but yeah. So we have a, a lot of doom coming up. So so pay attention, and and we should have something next week. Yeah, and sorry for the change of topic on the space, but uh, it went really good. And let's just do a whole space on this topic at some point. And uh, thank you again, Larry. We appreciate all of you and everybody who came. Fringe, up. thank you so much for you know for allowing us to sort of bend it into one of my favorite subjects and I, I feel it's all relevant and I, I do want to explore further with you, you know, on all of this. So thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you good again. Night, you guys. Bye. Good night. Y'all have a good one. Appreciate you letting me speak. And next time I do have three experiences I could share with y'all. <laughs>